Hello, I'm Matthias and the founder of DataTab. In this video, I will explain in a simple way everything about the t-test for independent samples and how you can easily calculate the t-test online with DataTab. Let's start from scratch. There are three variants of the t-test. The simple t-test, the independent t-test and the dependent t-test. The simple t-test is used to check whether there is a difference between a group and the population. This t-test is very often used in quality assurance. For example, to check whether a produced screw really has the given weight on average. The independent t-test is used to check whether there is a difference between two independent samples. For example, there is a difference between the salary of men and women. The t-test for dependent samples is used to test whether there is a difference between two dependent samples. For example, samples where a person was interviewed at two different times. This video is about the t-test for independent samples. In the description of this video you will find links to my videos and tutorials about the other t-tests. Now you may ask yourself, what is the difference between an independent and a dependent sample? Independent samples are made up of independent persons and measurements. A person in this group has no relation to a person in this group. They are two completely separated groups. Therefore, independent samples result from independent persons or measurements. For dependent samples, the measured values are available in pairs. The pairs result, for example, from repeated measurements with the same person. Therefore, this person is the same person as this person. This video is about the independent t-test, so we consider independent samples. But what do I need the independent t-test for? Let's say we want to check if there is a difference between two groups in the population. For example, if there is a difference in salary between men and women. Of course, it is not possible to ask all men and women for their salary, so we take a sample. In order to be able to make a statement about the population based on this sample, we need the independent t-test. Therefore, we need the independent t-test to make a statement about the population based on the sample. The question for the independent t-test is therefore, is there a statistically significant difference between the mean value of two groups? Possible questions could be, is there a difference between people with and without studies with regard to their health? Or, do two production lines produce screws with the same weight? Or, do smokers have a higher risk of heart attack than non-smokers? In order to calculate the independent t-test, the hypothesis must first be defined from the research question. Hypotheses are assumptions about the reality whose validity is possible but not yet proven. There are always two hypotheses, the so-called null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis assumes that there is no difference between two groups with respect to a certain characteristics. For example, the salary of men and women does not differ in Germany. In contrast, the alternative hypothesis, however, assumes that there is a difference between two groups. For example, the salary of men and women differ in Germany. Further, we distinguish whether a hypothesis is directed or undirected. This plays a major role in the interpretation of the results at the end. First of all, what is an undirected and what is an directed hypothesis? Undirected hypotheses test whether there is a difference whereby it does not matter in which direction the connection of the difference goes. For example, there is a difference between the salary of men and women, but it is not mentioned in which direction, if the salary of men is higher as the from women or the other way around. Or there is a difference in heart attack risk between smokers and non-smokers, but it doesn't tell us in which direction it goes. Do smokers have a higher or a lower heart attack risk? In contrast, there are the directed hypotheses. These hypotheses also indicate the direction of the difference. For example, men earn more than women, or smokers have a higher risk of heart attacks than non-smokers. So, let's come to the next section, the requirements. There is an independent variable, for example, the gender, which has two characteristics, or groups for example, male and female. 
This is important, you only can have two groups. You cannot calculate and t-test with three or more groups. These two groups should be compared in the analysis. The question is thus, is there a difference between the two groups regarding to the dependent variable, for example, the income? We have these four requirements. The two groups or samples must be independent. The variables must be scaled in intervals. The variables must be normally distributed and the variance within the groups should be similar. Now we will have a look at all of these four requirements in details. The first one. The two groups or samples must be independent. As the name of the t-test suggested, the samples must be independent. This means that the value in the one sample must not influence the value in the other sample. This is fulfilled, for example, if you're measuring the weight of people who have been on a diet and people who have not been on a diet. But it is not fulfilled if you're measuring the weight of a person before and after a certain diet, because then you have the same person and have the measurement before and after the diet from this same person. And then we have a dependent sample. The next requirement is that the variables must be scaled in intervals. For the t-test for independent samples, the mean value of the sample must be calculated. This is only meaningful if the variables is interval scaled. For example, the weight of a person. Not valid would be the educational level of a person. Secondary, modern school, higher school and so on and so forth. The third requirement is the variable must be normally distributed. The t-test for independent samples gives the most accurate results when the data from each group are normally distributed. This requirement is fulfilled, for example, for the weight, the age or the height of a person. It is not fulfilled, for example, for the number after throwing a dice. The fourth requirement is that the variance within the groups should be similar. Since the variance is needed for the test statistic t, it must be the same variance within the groups. For example, the weight, the age or the height of a person. Not valid would be the stock price in normal times and in a recession. So how can we calculate the t-test for independent samples? There are two different equations. We must consider if we have equal variance or unequal variance. The task is to compare if these two groups have the same mean value. Before calculating the t-test, we must know if these two groups has equivariance or unequivariance. How it can now be checked if the variance is equal or not. This is where the Levine test helps. The Levine test checks whether several samples have the same variance. The Levine test checks whether several samples have the same variance. If the p-value in the Levine test is greater than 0.05, variances equality can be assumed. Otherwise, variance equality cannot be assumed. Let's start how we can calculate the t-test for independent samples for unequal variances. Let's imagine we have these two groups, group 1 and group 2, and we want to compare the mean value. The t-value can then be calculated with the mean with the, the t-value can then be calculated with the mean of the first group and the mean of the second group divided by the of the standard deviation of the mean value difference. This value results with this equation, where n1 is the sample size of the first group and n2 is the sample size of the second group. sp can be calculated with this equation. If we combine all these equations, the t-value can be calculated with this formula, or a statistic program like DataTab will do it for you. Further, we need the degree of freedoms, which can be calculated by the sample size of the first group plus the sample size of the second group minus 2. Together with the t-value and the degree of freedom, we can calculate now the p-value, or the statistics software will calculate the p-value for you. Now we will have a look how you can calculate the t-test for independent samples if we have equal variance. We have group 1 and group 2. Both groups have the same variance and we want to know if the mean value in both groups is the same. The t-value can be calculated with this equation. So we have the mean value of the first group, the mean value of the second group, we have the standard deviation of the first group, and we have the standard deviation of the second group, and we have the sample size of the first group and the sample size of the second group. Further, we need the degree of freedom, and together with the degree of freedom and the t-value, we can calculate 
the p-value or the statistics software can do that for you. Now you know how you can calculate the t-value and the p-value. And now I'd like to show you how you can easily calculate the t-test for independent samples online with DataTab. To do this, please visit datatab.net and click on the statistics calculator. Here you can see this table. If you want to use your own data, please click on clear table and simply copy your own data into this table. I will use the example data. Please copy the names of the variables in the first line because these names will appear here in the variables section. We want to calculate a t-test and therefore we click on t-test. Let's imagine we want to compare if the gender has an influence on the salary. So we simply click on salary and gender. Now DataTab automatically calculate an unpaired t-test. If the requirements are not fulfilled, you can also calculate the non-parametric test, the man with new test. But let's say the requirements are fulfilled and we can calculate the unpaired t-test. If you like, you can check the conditions here. At the beginning, you will get the descriptive statistics of the two groups. You will get the mean value of the salary of men and women. And here you will get a box plot. Further, you will get the results for the Levine test for variance equality. You can simply click on interpretation and now you will get the interpretation. This results in a p-value of 0.09, which is above the defined significance level of 5%. The Levine test is therefore not significant and the null hypothesis is confirmed. Thus, there is an equality of variance in the samples. So we calculate the t-test for equal variances. If we have a look in this table, we will go into this line, variances are equal, and we can have a look at the p-value, and the p-value is 0.056, so it is a little bit higher than our significance level of 0.05, and therefore the null hypothesis is not rejected. In this case, the statement would be there's no difference between the salary of men and women. If you like, you can simply click on summary and words. The male group had lower values for the variable salary than the female group. The Levine test of variance equality has shown that the variances equality can be assumed. A t-test for independent samples showed this difference was not statistically significant. So either you can simply read the summary in words or you can look at this table what the p-value is. That is how easily you can calculate an unpaired t-test online with DataTab. Now you know what the unpaired t-test is and how you can calculate it online with DataTab. If you don't know DataTab yet, just Google DataTab. On DataTab you will find great tutorials and you can analyze your data directly online. If you want to be informed as soon as a new video of mine is released, just subscribe to this channel. Bye and see you soon.